Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know what time it is where you are, but certainly we are glad that you joined us for another Sunday School lesson. Today's lesson is Real Live Faith. It's lesson number 10 for August the 8th, and it will be based on Hebrew, the 11th chapter, the 1st through the 8th verse, and then the 13th through the 16th verse. So I hope you are still wearing your mask, still washing your hands, still creating some distance between you and, and other people who you don't live in the house with, and just, you know what I say, plain old staying away from folks. So. If you're joining us for the first time, we have been talking about faith. And if you've been with us the whole, um, this whole series, we've been talking about hope. Now we're talking about faith. And all of those things go together. Your hope, your faith, all of those are cousins and brothers and sisters. So it works out for your good. So we're going to pray and then we're going to read our what's it all about and get right into our lesson. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We bless you. We lift you up. We magnify you. We thank you for this day in which you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we bless you for everything that you do, that you have done. God, we ask that with these lessons that you would increase our hope, that you would increase our faith, that you would increase us on every hand. God, give us wisdom in these lessons. Cause us to retain what you desire for us to know. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. So listen, our what's it all about? Tomorrow will be the day, the young man thought as he made his heading south along the dusty roads. I will finally be in Tuskegee tomorrow morning. For several days, Booker T. Washington had been traveling toward a small Alabama town to open a new school. The year was 1881 some 16 years after the Civil War, but the, but the African American people in that area still did not have a school or a teacher to help them learn. Greetings, Brother Washington, some of the people said once he had safely arrived into town. We are so glad that you, fin that you are finally here. We sure need a teacher to help us. Others also came bringing their greetings and showing the new teacher around town. Here is the store and we have a, a church over there and most of our people live out this way, they told him. That's good, he replied, each time with a smile. After the tour was finished, he asked with a puzzled look on his face, where's the school? Well, Mr. Washington, sir, they responded, we don't have any school building. We believe you can help us get a place where the students can go. When Booker T. Washington agreed to come to town to begin a new school, he thought that there would be at least a building to meet in. What he found was people were poor in money, but rich in their faith. They believed that he could get them what they needed. Do you think it would be easy to begin a new school when you had no money at all to start one? Why or why not? Do you think that Mr. Washington would be successful in starting that new school? Hmm. So these are great and valid questions. So, 
Question number one, do you think it would be easy to begin a new school when they had no money at all to start one? Why or why not? So let me answer that question with you. And this is give you something to think about. Back in those times, man, oh man, having a school, having a place was not hard because people in those towns were very industrious. They worked hard and they worked very well with their hands. Now we don't do a lot of building now and our, we have people who work construction, but back in those days, a lot of people built their own houses, built their own churches. You know, now we hire people to do everything for us. And of course, we are not handy like we used to be. But back in those days, in order to build things, a lot of people use slaves, black people, African Americans. So the skills that we had from doing other people's work came in handy when it came time to do our own work. So that's why I think it wouldn't be hard. Another reason why I thought that was in these times, oftentimes your church doubled as your school and all you needed was a building for church and that would double as your school. But if you wanted more students to come, they would probably have to build something. So the most that they're going to need is some money to buy the materials. And I guarantee you somebody in this community would be able to build or they could come together and build together because oftentimes that's what they did. So let's move on. Learning from God. The Christian church has always been based upon a strong faith in God and knowledge that he rewards that faith in his children. The 11th chapter of Hebrew is known as is known by Christians as the faith chapter in the Bible. In it can be found several of the well-known Old Testament personalities. It tells how God rewarded the faith they had seen they had in him. See how this chapter begins with a statement about what faith actually is. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, 1st through the 8th verse, and 13th through the 16th verse. Now faith is the confidence of what people hope for and the insurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commend commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen is not made out of what is was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commanded as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commanded, commended as one of those who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is he rewards those who earnestly seeks him by faith Noah when warned about things not seen in holy field built an ark to save his family by his faith he commanded the world to become their own to become their to become their um, heir of the righteousness that is keeping with faith by faith, Abraham, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would let her receive his inheritance, obeyed and, 
and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Verse 13. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of a country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country and a, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So, this chapter is talking about what faith means to not just us, but to everyone in the Old Testament. Well, not everyone, but to a lot of our forefathers in the Old Testament. So, even though this is New Testament, it is referring back to our fathers in the faith, Abraham, Noah, um, Enoch, a lot of the stories that we have grown up on, that we have taught you about in Sunday school, that faith, all of these people had to have faith in different ways. So we're going to talk about that. How, what type of faith did they have? So by faith, Abel was able to give a better offering. Listen, in order to give an offering to God, you have to have the faith that what you give, that what you are giving to him means something. And if you explore what he gave, he didn't just give God any old thing. He gave God his very best. He gave him the first fruit without a spot, without a blemish. He gave them something that was a sacrifice. So if you have a thousand dollars, but you got that a thousand dollars in the course of a week. So you got a hundred and fifty dollars here, uh, another hundred here, another hundred here. By faith, if you gave God that First, a hundred dollars that you received, that would be giving him a more excellent offering. That would be giving him the first fruit. That would mean that you cared not to give him what you got last or what was left over. It means that you care about how and what you give to God. If you were going to give God, say you had a herd of sheep and you decided to give God not just any of your sheep, but the one that was so soft, so beautiful. It didn't have a spot. It didn't have any dirt or any. It was the most perfect sheep that you had. And you decided that is a more excellent offering and gift to God. Now, on the other hand, if you picked out the sheep that had got trampled over, hurt, he got one broken leg and maybe an eye missing or something happened, what you are saying to God is that you are going to give him what you don't even want. That means something. We have to give God our best those things that we want, those things. So we don't, and I might get in trouble for this. We don't come to God or give God um, our worst. You don't dress in the clothes that you would wear to a party or that you would wear just anywhere. You come dress, you come looking differently at church because you're giving your offering, you giving yourself 
I wouldn't let my kids wear their school uniform to church because I want them to give him his, their best. Now, if you can't afford it, if you don't have it, then you give God what is in your heart. But if you know you got a thousand, don't give them a dollar. And vice versa. If you only have a dollar, give him the dollar with love, with joy, because it still is worth the same thing that someone with a big offering can give. It is all about how you give and what you give. It means something to give God your best. So the second thing by faith that we gave to God is by faith, Enoch wanted to please God. Enoch wanted to live his life in such a way that it was pleasing to God. It was so pleasing that he didn't even die. He walked on off. That means that by faith, you are close to him. You talk with him. You live your life in a way that God doesn't even cause you to suffer in death. He'll just allow you to go on and go to heaven. Now that's something. Now I want <laughs> to do that. Third thing that by faith that we do is by faith. Noah was a builder. Noah built something by faith. God told him, hey, it's going to rain. We're going to do away with this, with the world. I need for you to get prepared. And there was not even water in the sky. And by faith, Noah built the ark. And it didn't just save him and his family, but it saved the animals. It saved our lives. Noah, by faith, built unto God. Another thing that we did um, that was done by faith was Abraham did, was obedient by faith. By faith. To be told at his age that you're going to be the father of many nations, you're going to have a child, and that child will have children, and those children will have children, and those children have children, and your seed will be as many as the stars in the sky. Man, by faith, Abraham obeyed God. He left where he was to go and receive what God had for him. So all of these examples mean one thing. They mean that by faith, it is possible to see the unseen. By faith, it is possible for you to have an ark that will protect you and your family. It is possible to give a more excellent offering. It is possible just to walk off into heaven. And it is possible to be the father of many nations. So we can give by faith. We can please God by our faith. We can build by faith. And most importantly, we can obey by faith. So let me leave another thing with you. This is the conclusion of what we read earlier about um, Booker T. Washington. We finally found a couple of old buildings. The, the teacher said years later, but they were in such bad shape that whenever it rained, someone had to hold up an umbrella over the teacher as he tried to help the students. There were some who did not think that much could ever come out of such humble beginnings. But Booker T. Washington joined his faith 
with the faith of people that a new school could be built. God wonderfully honored their faith. And today, Tuskegee University stands as one of the great colleges of this nation and a monument to the faith of Washington and the people. Do you think can God still do difficult things like that today for people who will put their faith to work? Listen, I do. I believe it so much. Me and my family, we are believing God for some things that happen for us. And we have changed some things in our life so that we can be in line for what God has for us. So we're going to follow this lesson. We're going to give by faith. We are going to please God by seeking him. We're going to build by faith. Uh, now that made me happy right there. And most importantly, we are going to obey. So I hope we said something today that will cause you to do the same thing. And it is always our pleasure to be with you. We love you. We miss you. We hope you join us at 8 a.m. service. I hope to see you soon. And you have a blessed day. Continue to wash your hands. Create some social distance between. Wear your mask. And just plain old, stay away from folks. I love you. Mwah.